Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today I have a very short video just how to set up uh, Terraform with AWS uh, Amazon Web Services uh, account so that you are able to do your infrastructure management with these. And this is uh, kind of tying up my future content on my channel because I will be going through some Terraform uh, tips, tricks, uh, ideas, uh, tutorials. And if you want to follow along and want to do these on uh, AWS account, uh, this video is exactly for you. If you want to do the Terraform exercises and use some other uh, cloud vendors like Azure or Google Cloud, uh, go ahead. But my content is mostly around AWS because that's what I know the most. So if you, if you just want to get a kind of overview, high level overview from my short videos, then it's okay to just watch and you don't need to do this kind of uh, actual setup. But for the rest of you, if, if you're having any trouble with this or are, are interested, just uh, follow along and I will show you how to get set up. So uh, one uh, problem number one or challenge number one is that there is so many ways to get set up. So my approach today is uh, going to be to show you uh, the end result first. I'm going to do that shortly. And after that, uh, we are going to discuss a little bit of the variations you can take. So let's get started with that. Um, by the way, as always, the comment section below my video is waiting for any feedback on this video or any questions you might have. So feel free to express yourself there. What we want to have in the machine once we are done, well, we want to have Terraform uh, program. So this is a binary. As you can see, I'm running it on Linux. doesn't matter. It can be Mac OS, Windows instead. But I prefer to do things in my Windows subsystem for Linux, Ubuntu in this case. So I have Terraform here. And I can do Terraform uh, version. Sorry. I need to clear this to Terraform version. And then you're able to see which version I'm running. And I can see that the client is working. So this is a prerequisite number one to be running any Terraform templates, obviously. Another prerequisite is uh, to have set up your environment towards whatever uh, environment or cloud vendor you are working with. So in my case, that's AWS and therefore I need AWS client. So it's set up and I'm able to run it. Uh, third thing is that you also need to have your profile set up there, but more about that a little bit later. So how do we get these in the, in the environment and how do I prefer to set things up? So uh, if you go to Terraform website, uh, all these links, by the way, also in the description section of my video. So you can find them and follow them as much as you like. But Terraform has pretty awesome documentation. That's one reason why I prefer this infrastructure as code tool. And if I just go to the first link about the docs, um, there is uh, pretty awesome content. And one of that is hands-on tutorials. My tutorials are always pretty hands-on. So I like to go to the kind of core instead of elaborating too much, unless I, I start ranting, but th that's another topic. But there's a pretty good tutorial on install Terraform. And by the way, there's also more videos. You can watch these and follow these. But if you like my content, then, then you might find some extra value from this video. And by the way, if you do, press that like button immediately. Okay, so um, HashiCorp is showing here a few ways and I'm going to go through these and show you one bonus trick that I prefer to do. But there is option manual installation. It's just a binary. So whatever is your platform, you can just download the binary, even compile from source, and then you can uh, go and set it up in your path and you're all done. Now the problem with this installation is that it gets a bit clumsy to keep it up to date as Terraform versions evolve. So that's one, one challenge. And uh, for that, we have a bit better ways, automation ways that I enjoy a lot. So if I'm working on a Mac machine, I might typically use the Homebrew. It's pretty powerful to do this on OS X uh, operating system. And in that case, I just uh, install it like this and update it like so. So very, very easy way to get Terraform set up in your machine. Now, uh, on Windows, there is option to do uh, Chocolate and on Linux, you can do, um, depending on your brand, uh, you can do your favorite package manager. So it can be Optget, it can be Yum and etc. You have a few options here. These are okay, but in my experience, these are not always up to date with the current versions. So you might be lagging behind a little bit. 
that's possible. But these are pretty good. All of these are pretty good ways to get Terraform. So you can just follow the instructions, whichever kind of suits your needs. Go with that one. But I will show you one more bonus trick, and that's TF Switch. So um, now it's up to you if you like to use a third party tool. But if you do like to do it, this is specific to Terraform, and this is pretty awesome way to install new versions and select new versions. I uh, kind of got used to this one when I was working in projects and Terraform version was pretty specific. That was way before 1.0 version that we are now enjoying. So in those days I needed to uh, use the exact version per project always and swap between old and new. And for that, this one was awesome. Now today it's a little bit better. So the state files are compatible uh, with uh, other versions as well. So today I could use some lazier methods, but still this, this is one of the options. And if you if you go by this one, uh, there is one caveat. So it's a third party software. You're giving it a lot of power here. And the default installation goes and uses kind of, it's, it's going to manage your uh, folders uh, that you don't have permissions as normal user. So you might feel tempted to sudo this. But if you sudo this, you are granting third-party application a lot of power. So there is another way, and that's why I'm including this link as well there. So if you don't like to give the sudo privileges, what you can do is just grab the install script, but parameterize it with a custom folder, and then include this custom folder in your path. And in that case, when you run the TF switch, um, you are able to also customize um, the folder where you want to install the Terraform as well. So you have a few nice options there and let me show you how that works. So first of all, what, where is my TF switch installed? As you can see, it's under my personal home directory. So it doesn't really require uh, root access. And then how I parameterize it is something like so. I think actually the latest version now should be 1.2.5. Let's see if it's available here. And I want to install it on the same folder that's already in my path. We can actually let it loading there. And meanwhile, I can cover some other stuff. Uh, we should hopefully see it happily installed. And then I'm set up with my prerequisite number one. Okay. Second prerequisite is to get the AWS uh, command line interface or CLI CLI installed. And again, there's a link. And I can drop this in the description section of the video. Okay, we got the Terraform. And I should be able to see which version I'm running. All good. 1.2.5, most recent one as, as of today. Yeah. So, AWS command line interface and your AWS profile is the last bit. So let's cover that as well rather quickly. So there's a nice link and you can go there and uh, you can get instructed. There's some quick links immediately here. Again, depending on if you are in Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, it's going to be a little bit different experience. Um, I'm in Linux, so I could go just here and grab that Linux installer. And uh, there's a few uh, more kind of uh, detailed options here below. But as I mentioned, Linux. And then I get to choose my processor architecture and they are giving me uh, instructions how to get it and how to unzip, how to install it. So that's definitely one way to do that. So I'm not going to cover that one, but uh, once when I followed the instructions, I was having some trouble. So if you are, don't hesitate to drop comments. I will gladly do an elaboration video on this one. But I don't have any specific tips or tricks on, on this one. Just follow the instructions, get it installed. And then you need to configure that. And that's where it gets interesting. Okay. And by the way, there's two versions around. I prefer to use the version two. Version one is starting to get quite outdated. There is some differences even on the capabilities and on uh, parameters as well. Okay. So last bit of my video, how to get set up so that you have AWS profile. So you need to connect your uh, uh, command line interface with your AWS uh, account. And to do that, I will just very quickly cover that because there is pretty straightforward instructions available. I think they cover that here, configuring the AWS 
command line interface, but there is again a lot of options, so I will just quickly show you one way. So that should begin from your AWS console where you go and you create a user with enough permissions. Um, if you don't already have that uh, user or role, it's up to you to decide how that goes. Um, but you do, do need to get some secrets also for the, for the uh, kind of uh, credentials, unless you are using some corporate, um, corporate kind of AD federated client, in which case it's going to be very different. But whatever you do, you end up having some kind of secrets, probably, or some details of connection. And in my case, I have these set up, so I'm just going to show you, and I do need to censor some of the th details. But here is the command AWS configure, and then I figure out a good name for the profile. And from, from now on, in my Terraform tutorial series, I'm going to use this profile. And then you have to put in some secrets. And in my case, this is where I need to censor things a little bit. So I will do some clever editing magic and make this part go away. Okay, so okay, so now we have our profile set up, and then uh, the last thing you need to do is to just to test it so that you are able to do things with it. And my typical test would be something like AWS, and then I put my profile here, and that's going to be terraforming. And uh, after that, I put some command. There is command like S3LS, which is pretty basic. Now this depends on what kind of permissions your user. Um, identity has in the system, but in my case it has enough permissions to do S3 queries, so I'm able to check if I have uh, any buckets there, and I do have one related to another tutorial I did uh, way back, okay, or at least a few months back, it seems. Okay, so that was pretty much it, uh, the prerequisites of working with Terraform and AWS. And as I mentioned, a lot, a lot more content is coming up after this one. I just wanted to do some of the basics and show you some of the variations. If you like to follow along, if you need to follow along with what I'm about to show. Terraform is a pretty awesome infrastructure as code system. It's not the only awesome, there is numerous ways, but it's one I'm very experienced with. So I feel kind of competent to share some of that information and tips and tricks and best practices and also show you some problems with it, how to work around them as well. So I hope that content will be valuable for you. As always, uh, let me see if you find any value in these videos. I ap appreciate any comments, questions, uh, clicking of the like button. And of course, subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon if you enjoy this kind of content and want to follow up my upcoming uh, stuff that's coming, coming uh, in the future. Okay. But for now, thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.